Why is Aung San Suu Kyi so important? That's the obvious first question. The, the main reason is because of who she is, who she was born, as the daughter of Aung San, the man who created Burma's first independent army, who fought alongside the Japanese against the British, and then with great aplomb and great wisdom, really, uh, managed to change sides and persuaded the British that he could be their ally as the Japanese were being defeated. And then he persuaded Prime Minister Clement Attlee that Burma was ripe for independence. Unfortunately, just a few months after that, he was assassinated. And he's been Burma's national hero ever since. So that's one part of her appeal, the obvious part, the fact of who she was born. But dynasty is not necessarily that important in Burma, not unlike in some other countries. For example, her brother has never had any political role. So it's partly her blood, but it's very much who she is. And it's her burning passion for the liberation of her country. And also the fact that she's lived in India, she lived in half her life in England, she's extremely well educated, she knows all about the role of people like Gandhi in the Indian independence struggle. Uh, she spent years in Oxford um, and has written with very eloquently about the problems of a post-colonial country in finding its soul, in, in finding a future that makes sense according to its past as well as according to the modern world. So. Uh, this is, she, in this one person, you see these different facts, the fact of her blood, the fact of her education, the fact that unlike 99% of Burmese people, she spent her life outside the country. She has absorbed all of these influences from around the world and has brought them back to a country which is desperately in need of influence from outside. This is the reason why even today, even after more than 15 years in detention, People all over Burma have enormous respect for her and basically they believe that she is their rightful ruler. That's the thing which it is hard to appreciate from outside, the degree to which she is seen as the legitimate ruler of the country. This is obviously not the first biography of Sue. There have been four or five other ones, in, one in French, one in Japanese, several in English. But this is the first biography which has access to material about the most important part of her adult life, which was when she was on the campaign trail. And her closest friend at the time kept a day-by-day -day diary when they were travelling around the country campaigning before the election. She kept it in English and she happens to be a very good writer and a very amusing, dry, droll, good observer of people. And she has given me full rights to use this material. So in the heart of this book there is thousands and thousands and thousands of words, hundreds of pages, which describe Sue in her everyday life. What she wears, what she eats, what she feels, the jokes they crack, the, how lonely she feels, how she's missing her family. Um, all of the non-political aspects, these are basically the personal aspects, which come out with incredible vividness uh, in the story. The sad fact is that this woman, uh, who was so close to Sue at the time, herself went to jail, spent three years in jail. After that, she came out and she had changed her opinion. The military intelligence had got to her and she was now one of Sue's enemies. Nonetheless, she has decided that she wants this diary to be made public and this is the first time anybody has seen it outside Sue's immediate family.